Ibero 90.9. My job was uh, you know, besides the film directing job, I think it was designed to become a filmmaker. And in order to become a filmmaker, I first, uh, you know, what kind of uh, work I can do in relationship with uh, some filmmakers or anything. And so I started out uh, film reviews just for myself and it became my profession. And then afterwards, uh, you know, just not only writing, but also interviewing filmmakers. And then by seeing those actual filmmaking in, in Japan and particularly in uh, Los Angeles uh, back in the 70s, I sort of had a you know, better idea of what kind of filmmaker I want to make. And in London, there was this National Film Theatre. Uh, every night I went, I went to see all those different kind of movies from, you know, from the old era or the silent film or classic films in any kind of film. And, um, by seeing all these films, sort of you sort of energize yourself to make film or this idea of what kind of film you you want to make is uh, you have to write fast and and then i started reading lots of screenplays and um, i read them all now in america in 1973 and particularly in the 70s there's uh, lots of studios took risks they try to discover new talents writer director encouraged some young uh, would be wannabe filmmakers to write and direct at the same time. And at that time, studio exec executives in Hollywood were film fanatics. They loved movies. And today, well, Hollywood uh, is uh, all those studio executives. Most of them are, you know, ex-accountant or ex-lawyer. They don't care about the quality of film. They care about numbers, and that's about it. That's why the American films are in decline. And I was lucky that uh, I met uh, all those young filmmakers, uh, up and coming and on the rise. And at the same time. Uh, those classic filmmakers, you know, those great filmmakers were still alive and you were able to listen to them as a reporter or as a film buff. So everything, you know, became together except acting. <laughs> so acting was not my uh, re real <laughs> thing and I didn't even thought about that until Ed Zwick called me that uh, you know, you, you want to take a just screen test and for the last samurai, this bad guy, and, and you know, for the first time, I sort of read lines in front of the camera, and uh, my voice was horrible. I mean, just as I was saying all those lines, and my, I'm listening as a director, and I don't like this guy. I don't. <laughs> I'll never hire this actor. I was so frustrated. <laughs> yeah. I trained my voice uh, by going to karaoke and singing Elvis songs and Nat King song, core songs. And, and I had a nice time in New Zealand, just uh, looking at this uh, big production from uh, the other side as an actor. The day before the shooting, Ed called me and said, well, there's a few changes in, in the dialogue and I'm going to send you the uh, new pages in, by fax. I have to memorize from scratch. And then the following day during the shooting, I couldn't come up with obvious lines and I was so frustrated. I felt shame, and, but Tom Cruise was very patient. I, I just hated acting in front of the camera for the first time. I talked to myself as a writer director, I shouldn't change any lines just a day before the shooting so that actors go, <laughs> you know, wouldn't go to hell. <laughs> well, it's, um, the big difference is how to create a sort of three-dimensional character, realistic character, believable character, based upon your own research. And so I love to read a lot of materials and getting all those information, analyze them and what is good and what is bad for, you know, to create one particular character like Hirohito or General Anami. 
and I try to relate to them and what kind of ambivalence they went through and then something like that. Today's Hollywood, they don't care about those characters. They care about the scope and the special effects and everything. So they don't hire a serious writer director to create serious characters in, in an epic uh, film. Today, uh, David Lean can't make his own epic in Hollywood because of the style is totally different. And, you know, I highly respect David Lean's kind of epic. If you see Lawrence of Arabia, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, based upon a historical fact and epic. It's a great scope and probably the biggest uh, budgeted production uh, throughout the um, filmmaking history. David Lean was, he was able to manage to hold what kind of character Lawrence was and uh, what kind of ambivalence he went through. He managed, you know, he captured this epic 100% as his movie. And that kind of filmmaking I, I admire and I'd love to do uh, in the future. In the future, I'd like to control a big budget production like The Last Samurai and the way David Lean handles or Akira Kurosawa handles that kind of material, I'd love to make. And this, The Emperor in August, is a sort of starting point to that.